Okay, now um, let's have a quick look at the orbit of the planets or the orbit of a body moving under the influence of gravity. And it says here, these orbits must either be an ellipse, a circle, a parabola, or a hyperbola. Okay, so if you've got so an object and another object is revolving around that object, okay, the way that this object interacts with that is either an ellipse, a circle, a parabola, or a hyperbola. So let's just have a quick look at uh, an ellipse and a circle. Uh, here's just a basic uh, description of, of how it works. So, how do you draw an ellipse? Well, you take two points. These points are called your foci. Okay. And you could take some string and connect it to a pen. And then you can draw some... You can basically draw this outline. And then this becomes an ellipse. Um, and it's important to see that this length over here is known as your major axis. Okay, your major axis, and that is your minor axis. Okay, major and minor axis. That's your minor axis. And half of that, that distance there is your semi major, and that half distance is your semi minor. Okay, so that's just the basic idea of how to draw it and uh, what the axes are called. Then, something very important to understand is what is eccentricity of an ellipse. Eccentricity is simply, the if you take the length of this um, distance between the foci, that length, and you divide it by the major axis length. So that length divided by that length gives us something called your eccentricity E, right? Your eccentricity E. That distance uh, divided by that distance. When E equals zero, it means that these two points fall on the same point, and we basically, what we're saying is, we have a circle, right? Because it's zero, divided by that e equals zero okay you then if you've got um, then if e equals one you've got a parabola and if e is greater than one you've got a hyperbola okay so what does that mean well all the planets in our solar system that are revolving around the Sun have an elliptical orbit they have an elliptical orbit all our planets all the planets in our solar system and they have uh, most of them have slight eccentricities meaning that they all actually revolve in an elliptical orbit but there's, most of their eccentricities are so small that they, they can be almost approximated as a circular orbit. Okay? And, um, but they give an example here of Pluto, who he calls a dwarf planet. I didn't know that Pluto was still a planet. Uh, I heard they downgraded it to some other kind of rock. That's orbiting the sun. So here's Pluto's orbit. Now Pluto has the highest eccentricity, meaning it is furthest away from a perfect circle. Okay. So um, if you go to this next table, okay. So table thirteen one. What does table thirteen one show? It shows solar system data shows uh, the Sun and then shows all the planets including Pluto that are revolving around well there's the moon as well here but uh, the the planets revolving around the Sun 
and it shows first of all it shows the the masses uh, of each of these um, planets or stars and then over here everything is in relation to the mass of the earth so the mass of the earth is one and then you've got the the masses of all these objects or these planets and or, or the sun in relation to the earth and you've got as we spoke you've got the semi-major axis and you've got the eccentricity now notice here for Pluto you've got an eccentricity of 0.25 and for Mercury you've got an eccentricity of 0.206 but for the rest you've got very slight eccentricities so Pluto and Mercury have the highest eccentricities that means that their their um, their motion around the Sun will be the most elliptical and all of these planets over here will be more circular okay and the the I think another thing to take away is that the more elliptical um, you are going to have large variations in speed okay so if the Sun is there for example and uh, Pluto is moving like this it's going to have large variations in speed between this point and that point okay I think that's all we can talk about over here yes I think so oh the what I just wanted to quickly mention what are parabolic so like I said all the planets are have elliptical orbits around the Sun but what are parabolic and hyper, hyperbolic um, motion? Well, these two, in a very simple way, are if you've got, say you've got an object with, with a, a gravitational pull, uh, and you've got an object that is being attracted gravitationally to this, uh, this object, basically these just fly by and they keep going. So... Um, it's kind of like if you would do a slingshot, you would use you would use the gravitational pull of a of a planet or of something to uh, perform a slingshot. But this object would then just keep going. Okay, so it would have some kind of escape velocity, and it wouldn't remain in an orbit around that object. So it would basically just fly off. Okay, so that's what the parabolic and the hyperbolic. Um, orbits is that really an orbit i don't think it's an orbit necessarily you can correct me but that's the idea okay cheers